we'll get started. So we can keep everything to your hour time slot. We know your time is very valuable and we wanna be sure to fulfill this presentation for you within that time frame. All right, so getting started today, I wanna, you know, again, to all of you, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you from everybody here at Mark Andy. We're really excited that uh, you're taking the time today uh, to be here on this webinar with us uh, for this presentation about our Digital Pro product line. You now we know your time's valuable. Uh, we're excited that you're interested in knowing more about the product, knowing more about the industry of digital label production. And we hope that you find this information valuable um, and that you're intrigued to continue working with us uh, in the future on some projects. So with that, we'll get started. I'd like to introduce myself, by the way. My name is Kristen Schulte. I'm the Digital Program Manager here at Mark Andy. And today's topics, um, as you may know from the webinar email, is that uh, we want to tell you about the Digital Pro and the new path to profitability that it offers you, uh, the application potentials that the Digital Pro can give you. I'm going to give you some information about the main uh, system specifications and how the Digital Pro is a future-proof configurability. And we'll talk more about that in detail. Just know that along the way, if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to use the Q&A box uh, to type those in. And you're also welcome to email us at marketing at markandy.com. And we can answer your questions individually at that time and any time today or any day thereafter. You can always use this email to get in touch with us to answer any questions you may have. Wanted to give you a little overview about the company of Mark Andy. Uh, many of you may be very familiar with the Mark Andy brand, and some of you may be investigating different com companies for the first time. So just so you know, Mark Andy has been in the industry for about 75 years. We were founded in 1946 by Mr. Mark Andrews Sr., hence the name Mark Andy. He built the very first tape press in his home right here in the St. Louis, Missouri area. And over the years, uh, his designs and um, fabrication skills increased. And, uh, you know, to this day, we have, you know, over 75 years later, we have over 9,500 Mark Andy machines installed globally. And we have over 80 technicians and experts established worldwide. We have about 70% of the uh, label manufacturing market share here in the US and in Canada. And we have about 35% uh, of the share worldwide. We work with 60 dealers worldwide, and we have over 400 employees. All right, let's talk about what the converters are facing today. As many of you may know, if you're in the converting business already, you're getting more and more short run job requests. You've got possibly a labor shortage, you know, harder to find trained press operators, skilled technicians. Uh, you're looking into faster lead times. Your customers are demanding, you know, quicker turnaround, quicker turnaround on those jobs. And you're also maybe looking for a need for differentiation. So we'd like to talk to you more about how our Mark Andy Digital Pro Press can help you with those struggles. As some of you may know, the Digital One was our prior iteration model of this small footprint hybrid press. We launched the Digital One product at Label Expo in 2016 here in the United States at Label Expo Americas in Chicago. And here just uh, four years later, hugely successful. Uh, we have um, over 100 installations worldwide of that press itself. But, you know, those first couple of years, we spent a lot of time reaching out to our install base and 
also talking to those that were interested in you know investing in a, a digital asset of some kind and maybe hadn't pulled the trigger on on something like the digital one or anything for that matter you know we asked them what is it you are looking for you know we we have this small footprint press it's got uh, digital printing in line with our traditional converting uh, but what would make it better what would really grab you and we got significant response back and we listened to that response. We were told, man, if you just, if you had semi-rotary die cutting, that would just really take us to that next step that we, we need, you know, getting into a digital asset. You know, we need, we need possibly a flexo station before that digital engine. We want the ability to print a high opacity white at a, at a high speed. We would like maybe some different slitting options. Uh, with the Digital One Press, we offered the sheer knife slitting cartridge only as kind of an out of the box standard option. Uh, now we have um, different options, which I'll talk to you about here in just a moment. Um, roll to roll unit, you know, we, we loved the idea of offering our uh, customers the inline converting, you know, the hybrid capability, but we also had customers that really just wanted the option to do roll-to-roll -roll digital printing. Uh, they had a well-established finishing and converting offline um, system going and would love just to be able to print their rolls digitally and uh, keep up with those short run jobs. Uh, we also had many people that were looking to, you know, do maybe 20% of their work with uh, sheeting and needed some kind of delivery device for that off the, the sheeter, uh, sheeting dies. And so they needed a conveyor. Well, we took all of this into consideration and we worked really hard. Our Mark and the engineers um, worked day and night uh, putting together the designs for what we now have uh, launched from last year at Label Expo, Digital Pro. The Digital Pro gives you productivity, profitability, and a future proof promise. What uh, you know, we are really excited to tell you is how you can configure this press to your needs. You have the options of a single flexo station or a dual flexo station. You have different slitters to choose from and uh, some other different upgrade options that you can add. Uh, but the, the point is that having that configurability, something that Mark Andy has always been able to do with their traditional flexo presses, um, we now have this offered with this inline digital hybrid. Right, what is the Digital Pro? Well, it has a production speed of 77 feet per minute. And it's very profitable for most of your micro to mid run jobs. It has an average digital cost of print of just about six cents per linear foot. And with this press, you have the flexibility and a clear upgrade path or even a trade in path through the Mark Andy product line. Ready, set, pro. This is the latest in Mark Andy digital technology. The Digital Pro is a four color dry toner hybrid platform, CMYK color, and allows for high productivity. It's perfect for the entry and mid level market. It delivers more speed at a lower cost to print with the Pro Factor. Productivity with your true production speeds for all of your standard materials. Profitability, with a low cost to print and an affordable initial investment level, with the promise that we're going to provide you the tools, training, and the dedicated resources from our team throughout the way for you. Because we want you to propel your business to the next level. There are many options with this press to expand your application range and push your business forward. We have two models to offer. We have the roll-to-roll -roll press, which is the Digital Pro One. 
I do want to let you know that the Digital Pro One Roll to Roll Press also has the ability to configure a Flexo station in front of the digital engine so that you can extend your application range with roll to roll printing. We also have our Digital Pro 3, which is the advanced hybrid system and has your inline converting. I'd like to give you an overview of kind of the configuration of our Digital Pro 3 hybrid press. Starting at the unwind, the core holder can accommodate up to a 30 inch diameter roll of material. And there's no need for pre-treated materials with this press. There's a web guide and a web cleaner at the unwind station to keep your material straight and narrow and nice and clean before the printing process. We have the new engine. This is the upgraded engine from Konica Minolta. It is a dry toner technology, tried and true, with a production speed of 77 feet per minute. And again, that's about 70% faster than the standard production speed of the prior uh, Konica Minolta engine model, which was 44 feet per minute. It's got your true resolution of 1200 by 1200 DPI and digital registration capability. It's got your operator interface at the digital module to control the digital technology. You have your foil or laminate unwind station just above the flexo station after the digital module. And you have your die cutting options from traditional rotary or the upgrade to semi-rotary die cassette. With the semi-rotary die cassette, we do provide a 19 inch magnetic cylinder, which is 152 tooth to accommodate the full range of repeat sizes that you would need to run with this press. And then we have the dual rewinds that can accommodate up to a 20 inch roll of material on each rewind core holder. Now we are excited to offer you a live demonstration running two jobs off of this press. All right, briefly, I'd like to take you on this live feed from the unwind to the rewind. Again, we talked about the unwind holding up to a 30 inch roll of material up into the web guide that has the, uh, the built in splicing table and your web cleaner. And then I'd like to show you the configured option here of the Flexo station before the digital engine. This is the Flexo stations that's going to increase your application range with the ability to lay down a high opacity white with a traditional Flexo printing plate. It comes with a UV LED pinning lamp system for any inks or varnishes that you would use would be UV LED curable. The job we're gonna show you today is gonna to be run on a metallized bop. You can see that we're laying down the spot white graphic of the label sample there. And we are printing an eye mark, a quarter inch eye mark with that plate so that our digital module ERC sensor can read that eye mark and allow the digital engine to print its four color process registered to that pre-printed material. I'd like to show you just above the digital module, something that wasn't in the last PowerPoint slide. It's a new option that we have available called our bypass bridge. This bypass bridge allows you to utilize this press as a two color flexo press if you needed. You can bypass the digital module and actually run your press up to 200 feet per minute. 
if needed. This is great for um, example, if you need to run something that's a second pass, do multiple uh, finishing options. We have a really great sample in our sample book that showcases that running um, a couple PMS spot colors with the flexo stations and then reinserting it with a tactile varnish laid on top. So just to give you some ideas of how that bypass bridge could be useful for you. All right, so then after the digital module and that optional bypass bridge, we have our standard flexo station that comes with every Digital Pro 3 model with the elevated cap stands just above it for cold foil or soft foil lamination. Okay, and then after that flexo deck, and I think I failed to mention that this is a 13 inch press, by the way. Um, I did forget to mention that to you all just now. So 13 inch flexo stations are what is in this press and the 13 inch uh, width capability. All right, we're gonna go into our die cassette. We have shown here with the semi-rotary die cassette. Perfect, you can see the shuttle, the festoon down there. And then this is a single die slot. All right, and then we're gonna go out to our converting here with the RD scores down at the bottom, dual blades, up into the slitter cartridge, which we have featured with our standard shear knife cartridge. But you do have your choice of selecting either razor style or upgrading to a crush knife system. And then we're gonna take you up into the waist wind up just above it to remove the waist matrix and then down into our dual rewinds for your finished rolls of labels. In just a moment here, you'll get to see us running a really great sample job for you. It's a motor oil sample that showcases all of the inline features of this press from the high opacity spot white from the first print station four color digital process into the second flexo station laying down a flood coat matte varnish, semi-rotary die cutting, slitting and rewinding. Kristen, while that job is printing right now, are you ready for a couple of questions? Oh, that'd be great, perfect, thank you. Okay, uh, the first one is what are the registration tolerances? The registration tolerances of the, um, if I get clarification on that, would that be for the printing, the uh, digital to flexo printing? I believe if, that is the question that's on there. It's, um, it just says registration tolerances. Uh, we can wait for, uh, Mark, if you can go ahead and put in some additional information for your question, that would be great into the chat or to the Q&A. Um, Kristen, we'll move on to the next question. We'll get back to Mark on that. Just make sure we can clarify exactly what he's looking for. The next one is, what is the speed of two color printing? The speed of two color printing, if you are bypassing the digital module, I'm assuming that he's talking about the bypass bridge, and then you could print up to 200 feet per minute. Great. And then um, the last question that we currently have is, is there a perf option on this press? Uh, I would have to get maybe some more information on the application they're speaking of. Um, I know, you know, with perfing, uh, depending on what additional things are wanting to do with it, um, there would need to be a stacked die system uh, customized into this press, which is an option, and uh, to allow for perfing and waste stripping. But perfing would be done on the die, of course. And so that application could be um, worked out in more detail if, if they had specific questions. If you want to email that question into marketing at markandy.com, and um, you know, we can get you a more detailed answer. Perfect. We have a couple more that came in. 
Um, what is the max repeat of the digital and flexo? Okay, the max repeat of the digital and flexo. Um, so the digital print width is 12.59 inches. And the flexo is a 13 inch flexo press. So you could essentially, you know, take the full 13 inch width of the press. Right. Did that answer the question? Was there anything additional to that question? No, nope, that was the that was the total of that question. Um, I had another one come in from Ronnie. Um, what rip is supported for the digital printing unit? Okay, um, it's a it's kind of Caminolta's rip, and um, it, it's I know it's been likened to something similar to a fiery. Uh, so if you need more information on that RIP, uh, we could have our Kanaka Minolta support representative um, reach out to you um, through Mark Andy on that question. So I'm going to make a note for that. Okay, Kristen, we got a little bit more information from Mark with regard to the registration tolerances. He is saying yes, flexo to CMYK, CMKY to cold foil overall die cutting to images, et cetera. Does that help? Yes, yes, very much. And um, I don't recall the exact tolerance. Um, Alfredo uh, is one of our print technicians there in the demo room. If he could verify, I believe it's 10 thou. Is that correct? So, On the, uh, the CMYK is 5,000. Flexo to flexo is 5,000. Die cut to flexo, or yeah, die cut to flexo is plus or minus 5,000. A flexo to digital is 15, plus or minus 15 times. Plus or minus 15, thank you. Kristen, you're very popular. I've got quite a few questions. Guys, if we do not, I just wanted to make a quick announcement. If we do not get your question today, we will make sure to have someone reach out to you after this webinar, but we are gonna try to get through as many as possible. Um, thank you, Kristen and the demo team for getting these answered. Um, the next one is, what is the max repeat of the digital and flexo? And I believe you answered that, so I apologize, Kristen. Um, it would be, which is the monthly production cycle of this press? The monthly production cycle. I would need to understand that question a little better. I'm sorry. Okay. Herman, if you can send us an email um, to get a little bit more information on your question, that would be helpful. If not, we will definitely follow up with you on that. Um, the next one, Kristen, hopefully uh, this will work. Uh, what happens to digital printer module when matrix breaks? Does it stop printing and you need to reset everything again? Uh, that would be a good question for our print technician again. If there is a web break issue, let me make sure he heard that question. I know that the press does stop in some way. I just don't know the exact process that the press operator takes to correct it. I'm not sure. Oh, Alfredo, do you need me to repeat that question for you? Yes, please. Okay, so it says, what happens to the digital printer module when the matrix breaks? Does it stop printing and you need to reset everything again? So it does not recognize when there's a web break. So if the web breaks, the operator and herself need to stop the machine or stop it from printing and then re-web and start it up again. Yes. Kristen, can, um, another one came through. Um, she wants to know about the sheeting option. Can you review that? No problem. We have a conveyor device that's an option. It's a bolt-on device that connects to the outfeed of the die cassette. And you can see it here on camera. It's a conveyor belt bolt-on device. And so your sheeting would be done in the die cassette using a sheeting die in full rotary mode. And the conveyor device can be bolted on right to the outfeed of that as a delivery unit for those sheeted items coming off of the die. 
And you can also upgrade to have the extension table here that you see in the black belt added on to the end of it, as well as the added grouper spike, which is what is called that uh, digital counter mechanism that spikes and counts the sheeted materials. So if you have um, a good amount of sheeting work, this might be a nice option for you if you're looking into this press and uh, our sales team can uh, reach out to you directly for any additional information you might need on it. And I think we're gonna be doing a die change here. So I'd like to direct you over to the die cassette so that we can show you how quick and easy a die change is using semi-rotary die cassette over your traditional rotary. Instead of removing the heavy cylinder, like you would have to in full rotary, the 19 inch magnetic cylinder in there just stays put. Our operator is gonna reach in and remove the flexible die from around it. And he's going to grab his new die for his new die job, spin around that cylinder, line up with the, the uh, scribe line, and roll that flex die right onto it. Put down the tractor hold downs, put the die bridge back on, and connect the air hose. And with that, if there's no other flexo converting changeovers that he needs to do, he's ready to go with his next digital printing and die cutting job. Hope everybody found that as exciting as I did. <laughs> All right, we're gonna be doing a job change over here, but first we wanna give you a up close look at the labels that just came off our press. We'd like you to see the different colored versions that are printed digitally. CMYK on that spot white that we laid down with the first Flexo station using a Flexo printing plate. You can see how clean that registration is, the digital engine's capability to register its print to that pre-printed material. This is what is key to expanding your application range with this small inline press. We think that having this high opacity white with the Flexo station is a great benefit. You can keep your production speed at full production speed of 77 feet per minute. No need to slow it down for multiple hits of white using a digital white. And everybody can continue watching the, ch the job changeover. We like to give you a real production view And I'll browse through if there's any questions that may have popped in that we can answer right now. Yes, Kirsten, we do have a couple. Okay. Um, right. What about the on-site support for customers worldwide? Does Mark Andy do it directly or through Conica Minolta? Great question. Your support is always directed to Mark Andy. We have global service support. We have uh, our main location here in St. Louis for phone in support, as well as in Europe. So we have multiple time zones that we can cover. We have 24 hours a day, seven days a week, phone support. And our Mark Andy trained technicians can be deployed as needed if they're ever needed on site quickly. We do also have the Konica Minolta localized support through Mark Andy here in the United States and Canada. Great, thank you. That if there's ever any digital, uh, digital equipment needs, uh, we could deploy localized support through Konica Minolta's service. Good question. Um, another question that came through, yep. is it possible to do a digital print over a material already printed on another Flexo press with the re-registration option? Yes. 
Yes, so the key is, is the eye mark, having a quarter inch eye mark pre-printed, and that is what the digital engine will read. And then it'll register its print digitally to that eye mark. Um, what is the width of materials that you can use on the digital module for printing? I believe you may have answered that earlier. We just want to make sure to go through that one more time. Yep. The, let's see, let me see if I can pull that question up in front of me. It's easier if I can see them too. Um, we will, uh, some of these questions might be able to be answered actually too in the next slide. Um, Great. We have, so the, the print repeat ability is uh, the digital print repeat, to be specific, uh, seven inches to 48 inches. So having that ability to run up to 48 inches down the web um, is something good to note you know, compared to traditional narrow to mid-web flexo presses. Um, we've got the repeat, so the, the printing repeat for the flexo stations is seven inches to 18 inches. Okay, and then your die repeat is gonna be four to 18 inches, four and a half to 18 inch. I'm sorry, 18 and a half inches, four and a half to 18 and a half inches on the die repeat. And then was there a question about the material size? Um, I'm going through yet yeah, to the width of materials that you can use on the digital module for printing. Okay, okay. Yep, so we support uh, widths 7 inches to 13 inches. We recommend 13 inches for the best use of your consumables within the digital engine, of course. Um, but the machine will accept and print on narrower material down to 7 inches. Great. Um, how many die cut plates are available? Can, make can you make a special order or special designs? Right, so for the die cutting, we would direct you to your preferred tooling vendor and you know, the, the die engraving is um, done through them. Uh, not quite sure how to answer that question differently. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can do, you know, different shapes, different sizes. Um, and it's all going to be, you know, relative to your application needs. Great. I had another, um, what are all the substrates you can print with this Digital Pro 3? Paper, HGPE, LDPE, vinyl? Our recommended substrate range uh, on the supported materials is going to be, you know, paper, BOPP, uh, PET, polypropylenes, un unsupported paper, uh, tag stocks, um, even some foil, supported foil, and um, vinyl can be an option too. Although some vinyls do have outgassing, so that needs to be considered, um, you know, as far as if any additional any venting needs to be done. Um, but those are available to be printed on. And again, no, no priming needed for those materials. Great. Um, another one from Daniel. For the digital, can you change the line screen and what options are there? Um, let's see, for the digital, for the line screens? Yes, for the line screen. Can you change the line screen? And, the, and, and what options are there available, I believe, is what he's looking for. I'm going to ask Alfredo if he has um, heard a question in this way. He might be able to direct it um, differently than I, I think I can. Uh, so there is an option to change the screen pattern within the digital unit. Uh, there's a 190 and 175 and then a stochastic dot option as well. Thank you, Tom. Um, Kristen, do you have time for about one more question before we make it to the next part of the presentation? Yep, I think so. And uh, I had my view off there for a moment. Did Tom print those, uh, that second label already? 
He is working through it right now. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't see it run, but um, I had flipped over to my PowerPoint for a minute, and so I don't know if I missed it. It, it prints so fast that if I blink, I miss it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, shoot with one, one more question. Okay, one last question, and we'll get to that. Um, can the machine be used as an offline finishing machine registering to a previously printed web by webbing using the bridge, but registered to a previously printed web to merely laminate or varnish flash die cut. That is a capability, yes. Yep, so the ERC sensor for the bypass bridge is there so that it can read pre-printed material as well. So if you needed to use this as a finishing unit or maybe adding a decoration or lamination, die cutting, uh, that certainly is the capability option for it. Great question. All right, you can see us, we are printing the second job for you today. This is a craft beer label. Four color process only. We're skipping over the flexo stations on this just to show you some roll to roll type printing. We are die cutting this though. So four color process with die cut. Um, I saw in the chat here, I just happened to catch it. Um, we have a question. Uh, what is the smallest die cut that you can do on the semi-rotary? We recommend uh, the smallest die cut in semi-rotary mode is four and a half inches. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I think, let me read that question differently. The repeat, uh, smallest repeat would be four and a half inches. I'm rereading this question again and um, I don't think I answered that correctly. Uh, so the, the smallest die cut, I think she might mean on the size or the shape, the cutout size, um, is really just um, kind of relative to your die. Um, you know, we've got people cutting anything that's a half an inch in size. Uh, so you'll want to work with your die manufacturer on their recommendations. Um, Kristen, a good question kind of come in right now is, um, do I need any special inks to be compatible with the digital? You want to consider for the Flexo inks, they need to be UV LED curable. And we do have, um, we do recommend a SIGWORK white ink for our First Flexo station, that's what we use in our demo room. It's been tested and validated. Uh, you're always welcome to work with your preferred ink suppliers for testing, but we do have that one available and recommend it. Kristen, I thought I'd mention to everyone that if you're interested in seeing these samples up close and would like them shipped to you, you can request that on our website under the equipment tab and then digital pro and then request label samples. We'll be happy to send them to you. Okay, thanks. All right, I'd like to flip back to the rest of our presentation now if everybody got a chance to look at the live demo. Great, Great job, Tom and Alfredo. Thank you guys. That was wonderful to share. All right, so I wanted to kind of go into the system specifications. I know we answered some questions out there that um, were relative to this, but just kind of going through br briefly for you. Again, high level is a CMYK, dry toner, electro, electro photo, I can't talk today. <laughs> electro photo, I'm not even gonna try that word again. <laughs> Electrophotography, there we go. Um, and it is capable of flexo reinsertion. And uh, the speed range is up to 77 feet per minute with the 1200 by 1200 DPI resolution. Your print repeat is going to be 7 to 48 inches in digital and 7 to 18 inches with the flexo stations. Your die repeat is 4.5 to 18.5 inches on the semi rotary. 
and supported materials again are your papers, your BOPPs, unsupported paper and tag stocks, um, your traditional flexo label converted jobs. No priming needed on those either. Uh, your material widths, again, you know, seven to 13 inches. We do recommend uh, staying at the 13 inch for your best overall consumables usage and cost to print. And your print width uh, is uh, 12 and a half inches on the digital and 13 inches with your flexo station. Uh, your roll capacity is 30 inches at the unwind and the rewind dual rewind is 20 inch rolls. Uh, the power requirements, uh, depending on the configuration you pick, um, might be up to two drops with a single phase at 82 amps and uh, three phase 30 amp with uh, air cooled UV LED curing systems at those flexo stations. And you have your online finishing and uh, conventional die station and uh, semi rotary and uh, an additional single hybrid print station available as options. And something else we didn't mention here, we do have um, a couple new options not noted. Again, we talked about the bypass bridge. Uh, we also have an adjustable anvil um, upgrade option as well, if that's something that's needed. All right, we kind of talked about this bypass module already, allows you to do uh, flexo printing and converting up to 200 feet per minute. And it bypasses the digital module so that you're not, you're not utilizing your digital consumables um, or adding any digital cost to print for those jobs, or digital cost to print for those jobs. And uh, so basically you can utilize this one asset uh, in a couple different ways. It can be your digital hybrid press. It can be a small two color or single color uh, flexo press or a converting and finishing machine. All right, and uh, we briefly talked about that conveyor system. Again, uh, a delivery device for any sheeting die applications you may have uh, with a sheeted material size between two and 14 inches, but that is customizable if you have something outside of that range. Uh, just work with your sales representative um, on what those ranges can be um, changed to. And uh, you have the ability to bunch and shingle those sheeted materials materials in a set, uh, set quantity sizes. Uh, this press was ultimately designed and launched to market to capture and support, you know, 80% of the prime label applications out there. And, uh, you know, some of those include, um, you know, industrial labels, uh, anything that needs variable data printing, of course. Uh, speaking of variable data printing, I do want to let you know that we have some variable data software options uh, and some um, file setup software options. Uh, so just know that if you ever needed some digital front end uh, things added to your press package, those are available as well. Um, you know, barcode printing, uh, your craft beverage industry, anything with um, uh, skin tone reproduction, high resolution requirements. Those are all captured with this press. Okay. Those are gonna be your prime pressure sensitive labels. Again, uh, industrial labels, paper labels, uh, durable food and beverage, uh, anything needing variable data, your health and beauty products and craft goods. Okay, beyond labels, the non-traditional applications that maybe you haven't thought about. Um, you can do tags, wristbands, uh, even invitations and other commercial print type jobs. On the right here with the wedding invitation, those we've actually printed those out and uh, die cut them on a dry release stock. And um, that's a pretty cool material for um, short run, invitation work that you might need. Okay, and your substrate range again, you know, your standard um, pressure sensitive stocks and synthetics available, you know, Tyvek for industrial labels. Uh, some of the thickness range would be 50 microns up to 16 point stock. 
considerations for choosing materials would be uh, the fusing temperature. It fuses at a high temperature around 130 degrees Celsius. So shrink material is not an option for this press. But again, this press was designed to capture 80% of the prime label market. And again, there's no coatings required for the material. Uh, unlike other digital devices that might be out there, um, there's no priming needed. You can use your existing Flexo stock to convert over your traditional Flexo labels over into this digital hybrid press. Again, you know, making the point that we're seeing more and more demand for short run, high, you know, quick turnover work out there. Um, you can start moving those jobs over to this kind of press. Okay, we want to kind of feature again the overprinting capability. Um, you know, with this platform, it's got controlled registry uh, for precise overprinting of pre printed or converted materials. And that extends your application range, of course. And uh, this is available on both digital pro models the digital pro digital pro one roll to roll and the digital pro three inline hybrid we have banner mode option uh, that prints up to 48 inches in continuous digital print and uh, you know that might be ideal for some new applications that you'd like to do such as pop displays uh, posters, large format labels, such as uh, drum labels for the industry. Um, you know, start funneling your commercial and packaging jobs to this single asset. Okay. There's some product certific certifications on the dry toner as well uh, for food safety and direct um, food packaging labels and durability with the BS5609 uh, for uh, submerging in salt water up to two months, uh, which is a requirement for drum labels. And it has a very strong light fastness rating on the blue wool test. You can see um, uh, an eight rating on the cyan, yellow, and black, and um, six to seven on the magenta. So that's a very high light fastness ability with that dry toner. Well, that concludes the information that we have prepared for you today. I saw a lot of questions popping in. Uh, we might have time for a couple of those questions. I think, Christine, if you want to um, throw a couple of those at me and certainly any of these other ones that we don't get to, we want to um, respond to you uh, after this webinar. We'll have somebody reach out to you uh, to answer your questions. And again, you know, throughout the way, if you'd ever like to email us, you can contact us at marketing at markandy.com. I want to thank you again for your time and uh, we'll get to a couple more questions here while we've got a few more minutes. Kristen, thank you for the great presentation. We definitely have a lot of questions. I am working to get back to everybody as quickly as possible, but like Kristen mentioned, we will reach out to you after this presentation if we did not. Um, so one comes through is what impact does running a narrow web have on the print engine? Owner drums, user? Okay, good question. Yep, we certainly uh, recommend uh, sticking with is, you know, the, the full 13 inch width, you know, you're utilizing those consumables, whether you have your label stepped across, um, you know, seven inches or up to 13 inches. And so your cost of print um, is better overall to step those across in a full web. And, um, you know, there could be additional um, wear using a narrower material on some of those components, um, you know, such as the belts and the drums and rollers. And, uh, you know, we would highly recommend if you want to stick to a narrow material for a set amount of jobs that you would have a, a set of changeover parts because print degradation could be visible at times uh, by running uh, for long periods with that narrow material where the material can kind of wear grooves within them. Uh, but certainly something that's, you know, possible to do and um, you know just having the right parts to change out to um, you know suffice for that that need to run narrow material on some jobs uh, another one can you print peel off labels with it the peel off labels and i apologize if i'm not um up to speed on that terminology um, we would have i would recommend that we have your uh, sales manager contact you to go over your specific application um, and answer that question directly to you. Okay, 
Okay, um, another one. Can you use an engraved tool in the die cutting station? Yes, yes, you absolutely can. So you have the option to run if you had a semi rotary die cassette, for example, and you wanted to run existing tooling, uh, engraved tooling that maybe you have already in your library, um, you, you would just remove the 19 inch magnetic cylinder and put in your existing tooling. Um, and there's a option to change it to full rotary mode versus semi rotary mode. Yes, yeah, so that option is there if you need it. Great. Um, how much floor space does it take up in the, oh, in the plant? As you could see on the video, it's pretty small. It's uh, just under 17 feet um, on the configuration that we showed you today uh, from end to end. So very small, uh, under 17 feet. What kind of impression count can you get out of your digital imaging plate drum? So two questions, imaging plate and then drum. Okay, uh, well in the manual, so we have those rated, uh, the OEM, Konica Minolta has a uh, set, kind of life expectancy of print distance. And, you know, that can range, um, you know, 40,000 uh, meters would be the incremental change period of some of those parts, such as the drums. And different consumable items have different wear lengths. Um, and it, it would be based on print distance. And again, if, if visually you're seeing print degradation or not seeing print degradation would be um, one of the things to consider when deciding when to change those out. Um, another one, um, can you digitally print on thermal transfer or direct thermal paper or film? Uh, currently, we don't have a material substrate vendor that has a thermal, uh, a direct thermal substrate um, for the heat tolerance, but should that ever become available on the market, that'd be really exciting. I know we've had a lot of interest in that. It would be uh, relative to a, a top coat that the material vendor would need to um, place on their substrate to um, deter the heat, I guess, from the engine. So the engine, again, has a high heat fusing temp, and that would be the key element there that they would need to um, work on for that application. Great, um, I think we have time maybe for one more. This one um, comes from Sabine. As, um, I take it that the dry toner module is from Conoco Minolta. So yep. the toner units, et cetera, um, you know, what is all the Conoco Minolta part? Yeah, so we are, so Mark Andy is the uh, direct distributor for all, for all of the Conoco Minolta digital components and consumables. And so we actually are a total solutions partner. We want to be able to provide you anything and everything you need from the press. Um, you know, outside of substrates and most inks. And uh, those can all be purchased through Mark Andy Print Products. Great, I think we're at the end of the questions. Kristen, I appreciate you and the demo team. Thank you for everybody for a wonderful presentation this morning. And thank you to all of our guests this morning or, and, and afternoon since they are around the world or evening. Thank you for joining us today. Yes, thank you uh, uh, from myself as well. We appreciate everybody's attendance today. I'm, I'm honored to have been given the opportunity to present to you. And uh, it's part of the part of my job that I enjoy and getting to connect with um, everybody out there around the world. So thank you for your time today. We hope that you found the information helpful as you may be looking into investing in a digital asset for the first time, or maybe just kind of curious about what's um, current technology in the market. Um, we're just excited to be connected with you and continue working with you on any projects you may have. So thank you for your time today.